it's time that Sydney rose up. And that's exactly what the Everest did, is it rose Sydney up into this now powerful juggernaut of a racing industry. The name, where did that come from? Look, my chairman, Russell Balding, said you need the, to call it the pinnacle. Pinnacle didn't really resonate. I took to the board, let's call it the Everest. There was debate that, you know, it's not an Australian name, but I knew it was charismatic. I knew that it was the, you know, it was the right name and the board supported me and uh, that's what we ended up with. I was the only one that wanted the 1,200 metres. That was the greatest debate that happened at the board and that was the one that I took the, the greatest risk on. And my theory was that what is Australia good at? We're good at the sprinting distance. We're good at the 1,200 metres. What do we breed? We breed sprinters. It should be a group one, but you know, unfortunately state politics have stopped it from being that. Well, it's the highest rated race in Australia, uh, anywhere in the world. So that says it for itself. Well, that's only a matter of time. Racing Victoria believes the Spring Carnival belongs to the Melbourne Cup. It's using its position on the Patent Committee to block the Everest from getting elite Group 1 status. The stakes race system, which includes Group 1s, Group 2s and Group 3 graded races, is internationally recognised throughout the racing and breeding world. It's a way of classifying the best of the best to win at Group 1 level. It's as high as you can get. The Everest is a Group 1 in everything but name only. Racers earn Group 1 status when they rate a certain level across a three-year period. The Everest has rated through the roof in each of its six runnings. Of course, of course, the Everest it takes two minutes, a Group 1. Biggest race in Sydney, biggest kick in prize money, biggest increase in prize money. I think that when you have the best Colts uh, in Australia taking each other on and hopefully one day the, the best sprinters around the world, the fact that you know, that's happening. I think it should be a Group 1. When we're selling Seasons and Stallions and they win the Everest, you're selling it like a Group 1 anyway. If the best race in the country is not a Group 1, well, what's the point of the process? Traditionally, there's been four, four Grand Slam races, the Cox Plate, Caulfield Cup, Melbourne Cup and Golden Slipper, the four big races, the big four. And out of thin area, there's a big five now, which is just, uh, that, that's innovation at its best. I don't think there's any question at all. It's, it's got the runs on the board now. It's got, you know, the ratings that come through the race. It's got, it's got everything that could possibly make a, a race a Group 1. And look, the younger generation couldn't care if it was a Group 1 or a Group 46. It, they're there because it's, a, it's an exciting event. I've never seen anything in any sporting event anywhere in my life than I saw at the Everest last year when the 40... 3,000 people sang Sweet Caroline in bars and function rooms. It wasn't just the massive crowd at the front of the grandstand, it was everywhere. It sends tingles up my spine that, you know, that we could be doing that. This is the theatre of the horse and all the horses will pre-parade here prior to each race. Jockeys are mounted up then walk back through under the tunnel, back onto that famous racetrack, and that's where the Everest will be run in less than 70 seconds. We'll get a new sprint champion of the world. Matthew Smith just greeting the owners. It's an important race for his sprinter. If Buenos Noches comes out and wins the show county, he'll be right in the Everest conversation. Kalina jumped uh, quite well towards the outside and Jenny was nicely into stride. Juanus Notches will settle third last in front of Extremely Lucky. Reluctantly though, with Argentia moving up the outside and Dragonstone's going up the inside and Juanus Notches slightly held up, angling into the clear now, Juanus Notches. Dragonstone just the leader from Kalina, Argentia. And Juanus Notches starting to lengthen well on the outside. And quickly, Juanus Notches moved up. Took the lead away from Dragonstone and Agedia. Running out of it, Juanus Notches. 
but he's looking for that Everest spot, and that's a big help today. What a snotch is beat on Jenny and Dragonstone. Sky and Lap thundering home at the end, and he chimed in like a good horse in the hands of Dylan Gibbons, trained by Matt Smith at Warwick Farm. I think it'll be interesting. I think there'll be a few people looking at him now for sure. Has there been um, any been any negotiations? Okay. No, uh, nothing as yet. So Probably wanted to wait to see him do that today. today. Yeah. So. Well, that's where we want to be. Yeah. 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 Here we go. We're on our way. Exactly, mate. First box tick. Trainer Matthew Smith is daring to dream big and with every reason he's got a very talented four-year-old sprinter who made a real statement today, suddenly Buenos Noches is in the Everest conversation. Everest slots have become hot property. It is rumoured that Inglis sold their slot this year for a seven-figure sum. It's not just about winning or gambling, it's about the promotional opportunities that, that come from that. And it's a key reason why we got involved at Inglis, but we're also open to helping others achieve their goals. Inglis has acted as an agent to sell slots for, for other industry participants or other slot owners in the past. And, and we were approached whether we would sell ours for a year. Inglis has leased its slot for one year to New Zealand's Trackside Media. They've turned to fellow Kiwi Mark Chittick and his cracking horse, I Wish I Win, which is trained by legendary Victorian trainer, Peter Moody. Right on that platform, Just put them in there today, number one. <laughs> Turn it up. Tell us the story of I Wish I Win. It's a family that we've been breeding 35 odd years, born with severe deformities, mainly in one leg, but you might as well say both front legs. Where did we're you put him? Literally on one of the other farms behind a hedge, so it was, it was more so just to let him develop, let him be himself. How many slot holders have contacted you? Six or seven slot holders, and we've, when I say we're in negotiations, there was chat, you know, we got pretty serious with two or three of them, and then we got the tap on the shoulder that there might be some sort of New Zealand interest coming about. It's just a beautiful fit. Beautiful fit and better money. I suppose if it was a six horse race, you know, the, um, there was there was two or three of them that were leading into the straight and there, and there was a few that were behind that, but then uh, Entain <laughs> come over the top. That's Lucas Spike or Giovanni Spiga. <laughs> Luke, Luke is going to Italy, but I reckon he'll be back by the 14th of October. So that TJ Smith, that run, when he came from the outside, there's only four horses in the Everest at this stage, and he's run down two of them. And that was the race that I said to Mark, uh, you know, when I suggested we go down the sprinting path, Lightning Newmarket, so everyone looked at me a little bit like I've got two heads, and I said, well, let's have a throw at it. He's a gelding. Mm -hmm. We're not protecting anything. And if he performs in those races, maybe we end up in a race like the Everest. Yeah. What's the attitude in Victoria towards the Everest? Oh, listen, I don't think uh, that there's too much negativity. I know there's a bit of argy-bargy between probably jurisdictions, but I think uh, it's been for the betterment of racing. And competition makes us all get up on our toes and be a bit alert. Good boy. <laughs> Racing Victoria CEO Andrew Jones has politely declined our request for an interview. What we wanted to ask him is why is racing in Victoria so threatened by the Everest that it wants to form a new racing body that excludes racing New South Wales? Racing Victoria is increasingly threatened by the Everest. Racing New South Wales has had to take them to court after this tranche of emails was leaked to them. In them, Racing Victoria director Greg Nichols tells spin doctor Clive Matheson that a secret meeting with the other states to form a breakaway racing body had gone well. It seems like you bamboozled them, he wrote. The emails also revealed the interview process for a new CEO for the breakaway body that excludes New South Wales was well underway. Why have you taken litigation action against them? To expose the covert actions by the other principal racing authorities to actually establish a breakaway national racing entity and to exclude racing New Wales from that entity, which I just find 
quite appalling to tell you the truth. We found that action was being taken to establish this national breakaway entity uh, to exclude racing New South Wales from that but also it, it highlighted a, um, uh, the anti-competitive nature of the existing pattern, the existing pattern of black type races here in Australia. From our end all we're trying to do is promote New South Wales racing. Unfortunately, they saw that as taking away their, their spring car. It was not never designed to do that. It was always designed to work together. They took an aggressive, anti-competitive stance, which has now been detrimental to them. Chris, one quick one. What does Nature Strip mean to you? Um, history, history, he's a champion. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.